I thought GPT-4 was the peak. I thought we could all finally catch a break and go back to pretending our jobs were safe. But nope, first they dropped gpt 4 o because adding a random O makes it faster, stronger, better obviously. Then O3 Mini dropped because nothing says trustworthy like a model name that sounds like an expired ozone layer. O3 Mini entered like a DLC nobody paid for, followed by GPT-4.5 which is not just smart. It's emotionally intelligent so it will probably cry with you during your breakups. Finally GPT-4.1 finished us off because obviously in Silicon Valley math, 4.5 is better than 4 o and 4.1 is better than 4.5. I expected the next model will be GPT-3.9 Recharged Ultra Pro Max, but instead OpenAI just went full anime protagonist and dropped not one, but two new models from the sky, O3 and O4 Mini. And in classic OpenAI fashion, they're casually calling these the most agentic, reasoning-heavy tool using bench-breaking models they've ever made. For the first time in ChatGPT's life, the models can autonomously decide to fire up web search, analyze data with Python, look at images, and even generate them, all in a single session, without even asking your permission. O3 is the new top dog while O4 Mini is the model equivalent of small but mighty. It crushes Amy 2024 and 2025 like they were middle school quizzes and still manages to run cheap and fast. It's the budget-friendly beast you didn't know you needed, perfect for high-throughput tasks or just flexing on your friends. The model can now integrate images directly into its chain of thought. It can use visual information as part of its internal decision-making process, not just as separate input. To check, I gave O3 an image with handwriting that even I couldn't read. It zoomed in, cropped it down, and read it like a pro. No joke, I wasn't expecting that. This thing might just replace my eyes at this point. But what's the secret sauce, you may ask? The answer is reinforcement learning at massive scale. OpenAI basically reran throwing more compute experiment from GPT pre-training, but this time applied it during the RL fine-tuning phase. Turns out, the more you let these models think, the more opportunities the model has to think and refine its behavior during training. And so that's it. Just slap more reinforcement learning on the model, turn up the compute dial like it's a microwave, and bam, new model series unlocked. But actually, no, they did sneak in a few upgrades, which actually feel more like downgrades for creative users. First, they improved this thing called an instruction hierarchy, which sounds fancy but is basically just parenting for models. In the past, users could occasionally outsmart the model with clever phrasing. Now, OpenAI trained the models with way more examples and supervision to truly respect the hierarchy, which means your clever hack era is slowly dying. Second, OpenAI realized that giving models more brain cells also means giving them more ways to accidentally help you build a meth lab. So they improved their safety stuff like BioRisk Monitor, which basically checks whether the user is about to commit a bio crime. Now, most importantly, what's the actual difference between O3 and O4 Mini? Turns out, it's pretty simple, O3 is big, O4 Mini is small. O3 is the heavyweight, more parameters, more data, more training compute. It's built to handle the deep, existential, solve my PhD thesis type questions without sweating. Meanwhile, O4 Mini is the budget model. Same general brain architecture, same training techniques. It's designed to be faster, cheaper, and slightly more confused. Keeping all that aside, the only thing I care about is the brand new Codex CLI, a new AI coding agent that's basically your unpaid intern, but slightly less likely to spill coffee on your code base. Codex CLI is open source and designed to read, modify and run your code locally on your terminal. Yes, Microsoft's favorite AI startup just casually launched it, thanks to Claude Code for dragging OpenAI in the right direction. Sometimes it really takes a rival flexing a six-pack for you to realize you've been eating Doritos all year. According to OpenAI's very serious blog post, Codex CLI plugs directly into your terminal, letting their shiny new models mess around with your projects while you sip coffee and pretend you're still relevant. It defaults to O4 Mini, but you can switch models via the responses API if you're feeling fancy. macOS and Linux users are good to go, Windows users. Well, enjoy Enjoy playing tech support to yourself with WSL because OpenAI loves you, just not enough to make it easy. They are also reportedly considering dropping a casual $3 billion to acquire Windsurf, formerly known as Codeium, a tool that helps developers vibe code. This potential acquisition would be OpenAI's largest ever. Fun fact is, before Windsurf, OpenAI actually tried buying Cursor twice, once last year and again this year, but Cursor kept swiping left, so now they're rebounding with Windsurf instead. Aside from accidentally creating an AI that threatens 70% of the job market, this one's strategic. Windsurf gives OpenAI a frontline weapon in the AI coding wars, one where GitHub Copilot, Cursor, and Claude are all throwing haymakers like it's a Silicon Valley cage match. And yes, this would put OpenAI into even more direct competition with Microsoft, which is also its sugar daddy and investor. Maybe next time, they'll release GPT-4.2 Home Edition and GPT-4.2 Lite with ads. Because clearly, if we keep the version numbers moving backwards while hardware moves forwards, that still counts as progress. But the truth is, this messy, chaotic, slightly ridiculous pace is how real breakthroughs happen.